Hello, and welcome to Wika's Get Wired GFCI Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Receptacle Breakdown video. Today, we'll go over a simple GFCI. My name is Bill Gar, the lead instructor for Wika's Get Wired program, and let's begin. I have a 20 amp feed through GFCI. The GFCI is meant to monitor any loads that are plugged into the receptacle and any receptacles that it's feeding what we call downstream. A GFCI can monitor up to nine receptacles. Code requires that you place a sticker on the many receptacles that are being monitored by the GFCI. A GFCI's importance is to monitor and protect people from electric shock. It does this by monitoring the hot, ungrounded, and return grounded conductors for current imbalances. While in the field, the grounded conductor is often referred to as the neutral, but strictly speaking, the National Electric Code refers to it as the grounded conductor, or that a white or gray wire that is grounded back at the panel. When a load is plugged into the GFCI or any receptacle that the GFCI is monitoring, downstream, or itself, the GFCI constantly monitors that the load is balanced. Five amps on the hot, five amps back on the return grounded neutral. In this animation, we can see that the GFCI is detecting a current imbalance. When the man touches the housing, he then becomes part of the circuit creating an imbalance of 0.004 to 0.006 and thus will trip the contacts in the GFCI. If the shell or the housing of a piece of equipment or an appliance has become electrified, the GFCI will detect an unequal load imbalances in the range of 4 to 6 milliamps. When this occurs, it will happen in fractions of a second, roughly 25 milliseconds. The GFCI will terminate power to itself and loads that are plugged into the receptacle and receptacles downstream thus preventing electric shock. A GFCI can be wired in a few ways. Here's one. There are a set of line and load terminal contacts here. On this side, we have a set of silver grounded terminal contacts for the line and the load. On this side, we have a set of ungrounded brass terminal contacts for the line and the load. We have four attachment screws, which we can see here. We have a front plate. We have a back black backing plate. We have five terminal contacts that will be tied to the internal backing plate here, which we can see the contacts here. We have a metal bridge plate that will ground the entire receptacle. And the heart of the GFCI is the printed circuit board. Here we have a coil, which is called the toroidal coil. When current is flowing through the printed circuit board and the printed circuit board detects a load imbalance of 4 to 6 milliamps within fractions of a second, which is, consists of 25 milliseconds, the contacts will open, the printed circuit board will terminate power to the receptacle and all receptacles that it's feeding downstream, thus preventing electric shock. So to reiterate, whether at the GFCI or downstream, any imbalanced loads that are coming from any load plugged into the receptacle or has become energized in such a way to cause an unbalanced load, if that unbalanced load current is four to six milliamps, it will induce a voltage through the toroidal coil, which on the printed circuit board, noticing that there is a change, will thus open the contacts in approximately 25 milliseconds, thus preventing electric shock. The GFCI won't work properly unless the fault has been cleared or continuity has been restored to the grounded conductor. Let's now talk a little bit about what a GFCI does not do. It will not protect against electric shock when an individual touches both ungrounded and grounded conductors at the same time, due to the current being the same in both conductors. No unbalance of current to sense to open the contacts inside the GFCI. This is why the AFCI was introduced. Only the arc fault circuit interrupter can protect you against an ungrounded to grounded conductor shock. It does not limit the magnitude of a ground fault current, merely the length of time the ground fault will flow. Again, the GFCI should open its contacts at about 25 milliseconds. An individual can and will still receive a shock during this brief time it takes to trip. It can be severe. It does not sense solid short circuits between the hot ungrounded and the grounded neutral conductor. The branch circuit overcurrent protection device, i.e. your breaker, does this. Inversely, it does not also sense another solid short circuit between two hot ungrounded conductors. The overcurrent protection device does that type of protection. This concludes our GFCI video 
From all of here, us at WECA, thanks for watching. Let's keep it safe out there.